I hope the message is out. I hope the notification is out. Sunday at Elijah are here again. I hope the notification is out. This is Pastor Sunday. Adelaja from Kiev, Ukraine. I'm back again like I promised to. And uh, uh, I wonder, you, what, you're wondering what is happening. Baby, you've changed your photograph. Welcome back. Share good part of you are back too. We are back. Nikki Christian, welcome back. Mashu. Wow, blessings. Matthews, Rochelle White, Justin Mayo. Bossy Fire, Jola, you are back. Victor Gunipa is back. Gloria is back. Cornelius is back. Uh, Olukayo Day is back. Charles, David, Davis, Padam. Uh, Fleur, Karen, Matip, welcome. Well, we're ready to go. Peter Foley, Kujoji, blessed. Basil, Osazele. Maria Storshak, Mary Storshak, blessed. Uh, Uluwato in blessing. Samuel Uduro. Lyo, your husband is here. Caught cold. But he's holding himself strong. John is here. Ayodeji is here. Julius is here. Peter is here. Unwafo is here. Kerry is here. Blessings to all of you. Welcome. And we are going to have an exciting time with the students that I'm having training with this week. I'm having a little training here with students from all over Ukraine. I'm past, they are pastors, student pastors, but uh, they are hungry for God, so they are spending their weekend with me today. I mean, this, this, oh, these few days. And uh, so we are ready to go. So who do we start with? You are the fortunate Nigerian that happened to be here. Uh, reintroduce yourself, Ben. Okay, um, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Ben Aputa. Um, I'm from Nigeria. And um, we've been having some uh, great moments of revelation and deep prayer with uh, Pastor Sunday um, here. Um, this evening we've looked at um, basically the um, um, redeeming nations through the gospel of the kingdom. Now, one of the things I've learned in all of this is the fact that uh, God reigns. And he has a domain because for every king there is a domain. Yes. And he reigns, he has dominion over that domain. Now, the yes. dominion, uh, the domain of God in our life is not just our heart. Yes. It's the universe. Mashaka so we must reign on earth. And we must also reign. So we shouldn't limit the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ to just to the heart hearts. of man. Yes. But then, we have done injustice to the gospel. Injustice. Then and, also. And, and now everybody is just talking about Jesus being our heart only. only. And we are limiting his dominion to the heart of men. Not man. to his own creation. creation. We are supposed to extend that domain to all of his creation for which he died, by yes. the way. And also of the fact that um, the, the message that have been preached over years have been just um, half basically have preached because we've looked at the, the gospel the, of salvation the gospel of salvation basically we're not talking about the salvation of the earth which Ooh. god has called us to reign over we've, we've not really looked at it from that perspective which is for me it's also very important because pastor made mention of something that christ might not come until we have done due justice to the reigning of Christ Mama, on earth Kasa, by uprooting all the tongues and uh, uh, what thousands, you on yes. earth and thousands what you, you have on earth. So that, that, that is another aspect of it. And again, um, the whole of this message has brought me to understand that the Bible makes us to understand that in my father's house there are many mansions. Now, these mansions do not belong to slaves, they belong to sons. And because we are sons, it means that these mansions belong to us. So the, 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 the tricky part of this is this. How do I leave my mansions in heaven and I'm come to earth to become a tenant? So I cannot be a king in heaven and yet I'm on earth as Walk, a slave. Walking on feet. When, walking on feet. When slaves are riding on the horse. horses. So it, is, it, 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 it can never happen. So we need to get out and begin to fulfill the second part for me, which is even the most important part, which is the kingdom of the salvation of the earth. We need to get out, set out and begin to deliver people. And begin to reign in our sphere of influence. But your brothers and sisters are sitting in churches. True. Because they do not know. And that is the lack of knowledge. 
So how can you be sitting in the pews and tr hoping to reign over the earth? When you are doing nothing. It's not possible basically because we all need to set out, really. We all need to set out from the pews because Jesus Christ is the light of the world and not the light of the church. So we are not <laughs> meant to gather ourselves. <laughs> we are not meant to gather ourselves and begin to... Um, um, the potentials and the talents that God has planted in you is not just for the propagation of church activities, basically. So you are not just meant to sit down within the four walls of the church and begin to share our talents and our potentials among ourselves and just to promote church activities. We are meant to go out and to reach out because that is the field that God has called us for and into. That is the area he has called us to work on. But he also equipped you for that. He gave you talent. Yes. He gave you passion. passion. Yes. He gave you gifts. Yes. He gave you abilities. Yes. For you to use it to subdue the earth. One thing I've discovered over time is the fact that our purpose is internal, but it is spread over a time factor, which in which our assignment goes time by time. So there is an assignment for you to fulfill part time, and these assignments are being um, um, shown to us by the directions of God, by the guidance of God, and the passion and Brilliant. potentials Brilliant. that He has put in, in inside of us. Brilliant. So all we need to do is to have that contact, uh, uh, constant connect with Christ, directing and leading us, while we follow our passions to the fulfillment of the purpose which He has called Brilliant. us. Brilliant. Then what do we say to our brethren who are watching us, who have even heard this for the first time? They never, many, most people in the church never even heard about the gospel of the kingdom. People don't even know it exists. People just go to church. I don't even know what people hear in churches these days because I, you know, I've not been going to church myself. I just, you know, I was only, I only attended church for six, first six months of my life, of my Christian life. I never attended church. I don't even know what they teach in churches these days. But if they are not teaching these things... That's why the church is not effective. Yeah, um, Pastor, that was very correct. Um, for me, initially, when I heard this for the very first time, too, it sounded um, a little bit awkward to me. And I believe and I know that quite a number of youths are, must also or must have felt that same way, too. But the truth is, when wisdom and intelligence is speaking, ignorance will just have to shut up. Mm. Now, this is the time light has come and darkness must Bashaka. disappear. So the truth is, Bashaka. we need to have an open mind to the word of God and to begin to understand the new revelation and the rema. You need to go deep into the word of God and begin to understand the deep rema of what God actually wants us to do. And this is the time for us to begin to manifest. So the truth is, there is no way you can fulfill purpose by sitting. Okay, let's look at it. Taking myself as an example, I've been in church for years. I've not been able to do what I've done in just three months that I've come to understand the light. So if I don't have any conviction, that alone, the result alone that I've been able to see within three months is more than enough for me to understand that the way I've been doing it before is wrong. So you have more results in three months in than three months in ten than years? Of yes. That I've been sitting down docile and doing nothing. What were you doing in church? Maybe they will put you in choir or usher. It's just basically <laughs> activity. And you know, the, 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 the funny part is this. Most times, people just do these things out of... Um, it's not because they are, they are not really called to do it, basically. They do it and they don't get fulfillment. Because it got to a point in my life where I, 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 don't, I do no longer go to church because it was becoming boring, not interesting and all of that. I knew something was wrong. What were you doing in church? What was your role there? I was part of the choir. I was just a choir member. <laughs> I was part of the choir, we were just singing and but all of that. But it was not your calling to go really and become part of choir. Not, not, because the thing is this, at you first, just have to do something. I just have to do something. Okay. I don't want to be uh, just warming the seat of no I, just, I just want to be recognized among a certain group. But deep down inside of me, I knew ba, ba, there is ba, ba, more to ba, ba, it ba, than ba, just ba, being ba, ba, a member ba, ba, of a group or whatever in church. So fulfilling purpose is not about... Um, and gaining and, you know... So does that... Are that you trying Christ. to say... Do you mean that... There is hope for Nigeria if we change the messages that are coming from our churches. There is a lot of hope for Nigerians if we do that. A lot of hope. For me, this is the new dawn. I'm, I'm, I'm thanking God that I'm part of this generation because I know we are doing great stuff for Christ. I know we are doing great stuff for Christ. You think there is hope for, for Africa? A lot of hope for Africa. A lot, as a matter of fact, Africa will be the new hub. Thanks to this message. Thanks to this message. So you mean that this message, just like it has liberated you, and empowering you 
and that you are now also going to liberate other people who are just sitting in pews or singing in choir or what do you say? The youth, the youth in my church are in trouble. I'm kicking all of them off the seats. They know me very well. So that's the truth. As I'm going back, Pastor, you won't believe it. Every of the sessions we have with you, they are, they are packaged into a lot of sessions that I'm going to have with them. So as I'm, it's, it's going to be, it's not just about talking. They are going to walk the talk. So we're going to have a plan of action. And you come back where we'll sit and have a review, basically, possibly on a monthly basis or whatever. You tell us what are the progresses you've made. We just have to do something. Enough of talking. Now is the time for action. So if everyone uh, is going to leave their pews and go and face some challenges of the nation and confront some principalities and confront the tongues and thoughts and begin to develop themselves to address them, How is that going to affect our country? One of the ways it's going to affect our country is this. One, there will be a lot of um, a reduction in the reliance on governance. Okay, on, on government too. On government to come and help. So the solution we are seeking Masha for, Kalala, waiting for that Messiah in quote to come, will be the one providing the solution. We so are the solution. We are the solution. We are the light. We are the light. So it is even an error yeah, yeah, looking somewhere yeah, else when you are actually the solution to an issue. And I think that has been the issue right from the onset. We've been looking somewhere else when we are actually the solution to the challenges we have in Africa and Nigeria in particular. Okay, you are saying that this message must change. The most the message in Nigeria, if the message could change, that we could change the nation. We could change the nation. Pastor, think, think about this. Just picture this. Can you picture a situation where the local government chairman, for instance, does not have anybody coming to knock his doors to beg for arms? He drives out of his house and nobody gives a damn about who he is. The youth and all of that wrangling around him are no longer there because everybody is busy fulfilling purpose. Their own purpose, mm. vision. So you begin to understand that people, at that point, it will ring in their consciousness that look, I'm dealing with a new set of generation of youths who know what it is, what they have been called for, who know the purpose of their life. Because that has been the issue. People have enslaved themselves to humans like themselves. Why? Because of laziness, ignorance, and what have you. Failure to accept responsibility for their lives. So the, the moment people are beginning to understand that, look, I don't have to wait for this person to put food on my table. I have to go out and do stuff for myself because God has put the potentials in me. You discover that it will, we will have what we call a healthy competition. And before you know it, the economy of the nation will just spin like this. And I know that you have started doing it already. Tell us <laughs> what you have uh, done with the youth and how many people, I mean, maybe some, uh, you, that you have even registered some people and what their skills are, what they want to do and how to recognize their callings. Callings, and, yeah. yeah. What I've basically done is this. Um, we, we set up a team. And uh, we go to churches, irrespective of the nation, we yes, speak to the youth. Yes. We speak to the youth, we have meetings with them on a monthly basis, we get their names. It's a data, we have a database for it, we get their names, their aspiration, dreams, and desire. They we have to break down. down those church walls. Even. Yes. They write it down, and we also write down their phone contacts, yes. their email or whatever they will have. So what we do is we call them one-on-one -on -one and discuss with them, is this what you intend doing? Do you have passion for it and all of that? So to want to be sure that they are not being influenced by peer pressure yes. and to be sure that this is what they really want to yes. do because if the passion is not there, they are not going to go yes. for it. Tomorrow they are calling. Yes, because from the first session we had, it, what really treated me was the fact that a brother walked up to me and told me, look, he's, he, has, he wanted to do photo editing, but he doesn't have the money. That he is so interested. I asked him, okay, how interested are you? He said he has gone ahead to make inquiry and this is how much it costs. And I said, really? He said, yes. Because I saw that passion in him, I said, okay, fine. This evening, let's meet. We met that evening, we drove out, went out, checked some good guys around, and we were able to discuss, by September, we'll be celebrating a good photo editor. Amen. Every day, I keep checking back on him, I get good reports. from what, There's another guy who said he wants to go into uh, fashion design. He's with uh, one you of the You are helping around. people to discover their promised lands, their Basically. land of promise, their gifts, Basically. instead of going to beg politicians, politicians for money and, 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 and pastors. For, uh, pastors, basically. Because you need to see the alarming number of 
youths that wait at the end of the service. Waiting, sometimes I even feel for the pastors. Wait just to collect. And they come to beg every day. Give me this, give me that. But if you empower them, you discover that a time will come. You don't even need to raise offerings or whatever we call it in church for seed in church. Because by the good nature of Christians that we, 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 we know that they, when there is a genuine need in church, people will give on their own once they are empowered. But the moment you just you just enslave people and you begin to merchandise their souls and all they do is to come and give and give and nothing is being you are not they are not being empowered and all that. they are just being enslaved in the ministry so you are doing a one-man crusade to set these people free to empower them to help them recognize who they are what their callings are and you are you know and you know setting them free from slavery of laziness of church slavery human slavery to discover that they are human beings they have the gifts of god in them to and to begin to pursue how are you somebody will say but you are just one man is it not difficult all of them need money they need assistance how will you be able to help so many people you know get their you know empower them to begin to start what they want to do Yes, Pastor, that, that, that's the, the, the very interesting part. Initially, this was one of the things that laid, weighed me back. But the truth is, some of them, what they need is even meager. Hmm. I tell you the truth. So, okay, take for instance, the guy that said he wanted to do um, a fashion, he wants to be a fashion designer, a lot. I have a good tailor friend around. I just walked up to him and said, look, this guy wants to learn. Can you help me teach him? He said, fine, I'm booked for one year. But I'm talking to him, I've not paid the guy a dime because he's not going to collect money from me. He's just my friend. So some of them, what you actually need is nothing. That is one. So, so some of them, they even have the resources, but they don't have the mentorship. Nobody is to guide them. So all you need to do is to tell them, okay, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. That is another part. Then to some of them, it's just the encouragement. They have the, 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 the knowledge, they have the desire and everything, but they are not being encouraged. Some of them are being weighed down either by their parents or by uh, wrong... Uh, sometimes people want to do things. They are, waiting, they are waiting to appeal to the conscience of others before they do it. So you just have to keep them. Even in church. So many are seated, so many, I know a lady, I told her, I said, look, you, you are going to wax your album because some of the songs she composes, the church, they, we send them in church. And but she's just there relaxed. She doesn't have any album. She doesn't have any album and she's just there relaxed. And I said, look, you are going to go back to the studio and wax your album. What are you sitting and doing? So sometimes some of these things does not really require finance. Why some really, really needs finance? And I think that is where we need to come together, concerted effort. But what I've been doing is I've been talking to friends who of like passions and we've been coming together and we've been doing the little we can do. And because we've been doing the little, even the youth, some of them are beginning to take responsibilities for their life and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to do a part-time job, get money and go learn this skill so that I can do this for myself. Let me give you some of the ideas that will really help you to resolve the money problem to empower people. Uh, personally, the way you know, I created two hundred millionaires in in uh, in three years. In three years, I created wow. two hundred millionaires. The way I did it is that I began to train them like this. So when you train hundred people, there will always be maybe that ten percent or twenty percent that are the quick starters. Mm -hmm. So they caught what I said they should do. They go and got and got uh, loan from the bank. You know, did what they needed to do, and everything. so the one I just need one, but maybe but out of hundred twenty they did, but I only just need one. So uh, you know, not have a million yet, but they took taking the right steps. Steps. So what I say, okay, since you have been able to take the right step, now I hook up every other person. You have done it. You must have ten or hundred people under you that you teach that same one step that you have taken. Take second step. So when one of them made a million. I, he has to take, take 10 or 100 people to be training to do just repeat all the steps that I've taken. Mm. And then when I have two millionaires, he has to also do, everybody has to begin to take. Then another thing you can do is that you could just be announcing when you have a list of all these people <coughs> that have written what they want to become, where you could, tell, you could say, okay, I need people who know how to work on computer. You, you know, you have the different yes, the areas. Yes. You might not, you are coming to church and you do, might wondering what you can use your gift to do apart from let us use let us use them to empower these people. You can even ask not just members of your church, members of other churches also, and give announcement even anywhere. Anybody that wants to you know help serve and serve people, you and maybe tailoring, maybe other things, you know, anything, any skill that they said they want to become, just find people already have within them. once a week, just volunteer once a week. Or once a month, maybe you could volunteer to train these people, disciple them. That is the way they also become skillful. Then other people might say, "Okay, uh, we need this. We need to raise this money. 
and this money we are ready to come and work for it what kind of work can do you need to do we need i, I have two people who need to raise money let them come and work for you for one day or two days and then or one week or so we get something for them just to bless them yeah. not just to give them from not for nothing then another thing you can also do is that uh you could ask people of like-minded like a club like rotary club people do you know they just do things you know for social society but not for human beings. But human beings are the greatest uh, resource of resource, God. Yeah. So we could get people like you who are middle class or who are employed. Who know them. You say, see the list of these people I have. Go gather them about 10 or 20 people in this community, maybe under any amount that comes, and say, see, I've been able to gather 1,000 youth. See, all of them, are, they will shed tears. Any human being will be touched. That all of them, they are right now begging. They are right now going to be fall into the hands of the militant son. They are right now about to be recru recru recruited by other people. They are right now begging politicians, begging pastors. But see, I have been able to help them to discover what they are going to become. Mm. I've done my own part. See, see, Charles, he wants to become this. This wants to become this. This wants to become this. I've already helped this, this. Then into that meeting where there are middle class people, let some of them come and testify how their lives have changed. And tell everybody that is sitting there, I need your ideas. I don't need money or anything from you. Just tell me, how can you help us? So that from these 10 or 2 that I've helped, so that all of them will be mm. able to become their own men. Mm. They will be come, they come to fulfillment. They will also be men. And all of them have the assignment that as soon as you are helped, you must help another 100 people as well. And this is the way we are going to change Nigeria. And maybe all of them also want to, and then you will encourage them to, Find your own passion. Giving tithe and offering is not enough. Our country is dying. The gospel of the kingdom must be preached. And you must discover what, you, what your own passion is. Where is your own promised land. And then you see what God has helped me to do with the youth. You can do it with the businessmen. You can do it with women. You can do it with widows. You can do it with militants. You can do it where all of you are burdened for somewhere. Not just to stand in the choir or the usher. And that's the way we can spread the word little by little. Even if pastors will not change their message, we that are enlightened, that have been privileged to know this message, that God has trusted to hear it, we could be the deliverer of that country. And God will bypass churches, God will bypass pastors, God will bypass anybody. Mm -hmm. And they will raise up stones if his servants will not hear it. Yes, um, thank you very much, uh, Pastor, for the ideas you've given uh, me. As a matter of fact, some of them were things I've already, I was actually looking into. One of them, just like you said, is um, having a network of um, people of like minds, basically, because for me, I think that is the next step I, I really need to uh, look into. I need to get people of like minds because I understand. Sorry, sorry, please. Someone is writing that there, there is no audio. I want you to, if, you, if any one of you hear me, could you write? Is there audio or there is no audio? Somebody just wrote Solomon or Nazi said there is no audio. Please, can you tell me? Is there audio or there is no audio? Please help me check. If there is audio, please write that there is audio. If there is no audio, if you are not hearing me, can you hear me, please? Can you hear? Is there any voice? There is audio. So it is the problem. Let somebody write there that it is the problem of Onazi. Let somebody wrote to Onazi and said it is his own problem, it is his own computer. Yeah, since everybody else is here. Right? <coughs> yes, my brother. All right, like I was trying to say, um, um, getting a network of people of like minds, it's really um, the next step for me, which is what I've been looking in, um, into. Thank God that you've um, also reiterated that also. Because I know that just the way I have the body in my heart, there are so many other persons too, seated in one corner or the other, who also have this body in their heart. But somehow, for some certain reasons, they've not, maybe just the way I've, before now, I've not made any, uh, um, taken any critical step towards it. So I'm going to talk to them, we'll get these people together and begin to work on them. And just like you said, in-house resources, I know I have a lot of friends. Um, as a matter of fact, I we were planning to do one. There's a friend of mine who is into soap making, um, um, bleach, and all of that. I've spoken to him. He's getting the chemicals and all of that. So we're going to train them, do an in-house training. And, and another thing we'll be doing is um, I also network with other churches who have the same um, burden. burden too. There's a pastor of us who did um, of recent 
who did the website designing and all of that training for website for free. So all I needed to do was because of the database. But don't just have, train them and leave them to go. They have to be willing to also give back. Back. Yes. Yes. So for because of the database and of the some youths, of them might not be even if they said okay my own sphere of influence is this and that and there are no other people to invest in them or to train them yet we could say okay go and partner go and help this it's other brother here yes. he's already found his own promised mm -hmm. land mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. get some experience mm -hmm. learn skills learn it will teach you some other things too True. while we are growing and you are making some money or you're getting some experience you'll be able to step out after when your own Pastor, time that, comes. that's a fantastic one yes that, that I, I think i that that's another one to take on board it's a very good one so like i was trying to say because of the um, database of the youtube had the contact so we just do a book sms to them and say look so so training is happening so so uh please you you need to avail yourself of this opportunity and all the like then at the end of the day we get a, a, a list of those who actually attended what they learned and a feedback from them so that you can also backtrack the impacts you've been making over the years so because and one thing I've discovered, and definitely make sure that you record all these things. Okay. Find somebody or volunteer who will be recording. Let it be, let that be his own ministry. As a matter of fact, the, the guy that did the photo editing, yes. that's what he's doing now. Excellent. Let so him do just, the video recording yes, as well. Yes. Put them on the uh, idea they are in the media. Mm. Word not, the word has to go around. Just like I'm doing now. Let him record the video. Let him record the audio. Let him put it in Facebook, on Facebook, WhatsApp. Let him put small, small, short, short testimonies. Let them go viral so that we'll liberate our land. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. We'll definitely Any little that. thing you do, any little success, the whole world might hear you. Okay, sir. Definitely work on that. And I know by his grace, um, the, the, the change that we've been expecting and the Messiah that we've been expecting, we'll discover it inside it's in of us. us. It's in us. <laughs> ben, <laughs> my brother Ben, are you grateful to God that God led your wife? Your, she was your fiance at that time, or what? She was your wife to yes. come and study in the Ukraine. Um, yes, she was once my fiance before we got married. Well, she was already in, uh, in Ukraine before we got married, anyway. Yes, I'm saying, did you are you grateful to God that through her and through her coming to Ukraine, God has now brought you, you just changed your life totally? Uh, absolutely. Um, I think somehow, uh, if there's something I'm very sure about in my life, all the years I've known God, is the fact that. Um, Getting married to her wasn't coincidental. It was divine. And I'm beginning to reap the fruit of listening to God. Because one of the things that happened is, um, she has been here since 2010, there about. I, I wanted to come in 2013. It didn't work. Mm. And then she was in Lugansk. So I was wondering, okay, what could have been You would have seen me. I would me. have met you. So you could understand. So when, I, when it worked this year, the first thing I said to myself is, I think there is a need. There is a purpose in this. God has a reason. So when I was coming, I was coming with an open mind to say, okay, what exactly is God having for me? What exactly? And before, just before then, like three months before I came, I've had that burden. I, as a matter of fact, I stopped going to weekly services in church because it was boring. <coughs> I knew something was wrong. So when I was coming, I was just, and as God will have at December. The message is wrong. The yeah, gospel we are preaching is faulty. Faulty. And as God will, I will have it, my, my bed is in December. She prayed a prayer for me and said, God, help my husband to discover her purpose. She started the whole thing. Baba shaka, baba unknown to her. And that has and been and my yearning. So I was just like, okay, shika God, what is it? So when I came and it was your 22nd anniversary, I said, whoa, I'm not missing this for a bit. I just must be here. So I am indeed grateful to God because I know he had everything all planned out. And um, he knows everything. Is there One visit. There? One visit to Ukraine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's now changing not just Ben's destiny, it's changing the young people, all those young men and women. And you said you have a list already. Pastor, it is amazing. The truth is, when, when I look back at all of those things, and I just like I said in the morning, the excitement I feel from the fact that I now know my purpose. Oh, and I'm Jesus! On it. it's, it's amazing. You, you Jesus! Need to feel it. I, Jesus! I can't express it in words. The fact that you are not conscious of the fact that, yes. Mm. I know this is the reason I'm being called. This is the reason. And the most interesting part is the fact that you said God has equipped us. And the truth is, he has, and when I look back and say, look, this thing I'm even crying for, God has actually, so what have I been doing? Why, did, why didn't I think along this line all these years? Then I now understood why he actually took me from where I used to be and brought me to where I am. Because I know it, I, my, my, my present location, being where I am, was not, it's not coincidental. It's not just um, by chance. God has a plan and a purpose for it. Mm. So the greatest thing that can happen to any man in life is to discover your purpose. Mm. 
it is a big disservice to yourself if you don't discover your purpose and work on it. But, oh my God, I'm just pained and burdened by the millions that go to church in our country and all over the world, but they don't even, nobody even tells them. So the, 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 I think one of the challenges is this. Most people go to church with the mindset that they are, they are going after the fantastic. Now, that, that is one. They, they want to see, see someone who will tell them their future, someone who will tell them what has happened to them. The supernatural. Supernatural. Someone who will um, pray out the demons and break the curse upon their life. And all. I tell them, look, what you need is not deliverance, it's repentance. Give your life to Christ and those causes are broken. And dedicate yourself to God's and dedicate purpose. Yourself, your cause. The moment you give your life to Christ, the Bible says we are joint heads. You have been grafted into the family. You don't need man to begin to tell you something. You are free. So again, the bondage you, you put ourselves God. and the limitation are the ones we build in our head. So that is one of the things. And because there are a lot of, oh, the Bible also mentions, there are a lot of fake pastors and all of that, I'm sorry to say, outside there. They are just basically out to merchandise. Even the, the good ones, they don't have the mess, this message of the kingdom. The, the, the challenge is some of them are beginning to, instead of them influencing the world, the world is beginning to influence them. Wow. So now they are beginning to preach the gospel, the, 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 the popular gospel in, in, in quotes that would make the church full and um, they get uh, whatever, money or what have you. So they, they are beginning to you don't you don't allow the world to we are meant to influence the world and not the other way around so that's why the father will have this we also have some good persons which i must we must give credit to some good pastors who have stood their ground and said no we must stand for god and we must preach the right gospel amen amen we must preach the right you, it's amazing when uh, people come and the the manner pastor the manner of offering they raise these days in churches you won't believe it Offering for sacrifice of a uh, long life. But what about if those offerings, you know, are being used to empower those same youth you are saying, to help them find their promised land? The, and the challenge is, what was the motive behind raising those offerings? That was the challenge. There are people, Pastor, do you know that good Christians, people who have the understanding of the knowledge of God, don't longer go to church? Okay. Because one thing I've discovered is this, the moment you, they your, get I told my wife, yes, the moment your, your knowledge about God increases, one, you are seen as someone who is backsliding. Why? Because you don't join them in those activities I any see. longer. Because you have a better knowledge. Yeah. For instance, you can't come in to come and do a night vision and be casting a binding. When I, I have good sleep to sleep if I don't have any other thing to do. Yeah. Casting a binding who demons. Or you go and develop yourself in your own in my sphere own of influence. Sphere of influence. You, you understand? Or you go and, be, go and be training those young people to become who God wants them to become. As a matter of fact, anytime I'm in church, I sit down and I look at the youth. What I think about most times is, is awesome because I'm, I'm just waiting for the service to finish. Let me meet with these guys, please. <laughs> finish the service and let me... I need to deal with these people. I need to do stuff with them because, you, you see, when you understand your purpose, the thing is this, life becomes easy. Righteousness becomes easy. You don't struggle any longer when you discover your purpose because now the thing is, those things that easily beset you are none of your priority any yes, longer because you yes. now understand this is the reason one thing I've been created for. So I don't carry all those baggages and all those things that I've been bothering myself about because they are not irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. This is what I've been wired for. So all I need to do is to look for people with, with the same passion and we begin to work together and begin to break grounds for Christ. Because indeed, if you begin to see the way the devil is bastardizing the destinies of youth, then you understand that the youth is one, is one part of the society that we really need to deal with. Because if we don't, then I am afraid we are, we, Satan we are, will deal with us we are in big trouble. Okay. Thank you so much, Ben. I'm really blessed by it. So you believe that this message that we brought today, redemption of the earth through the gospel of the kingdom, uh, it is the answer. It has changed you. And it's going to change our country. Seriously, this is what we'll be waiting for. This is what we need. And this is exactly um, the, like you said, the answer to the present challenge that we face in our society. And I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to work with you, Pastor Mon. This and also change the lives of the, I want to see the lives of the youth around, my life, around me basically changed. If, if that is one thing I can do for God, then I, I think I'm, I'm... Even though you have a good job, because sometimes... We do, our life is being reduced not to purpose, but from purpose to just jobs. Mm. So instead of us to be talking purpose, thinking purpose, and gauging ourselves by purpose, 
by destiny for which you were created. For example, you have a good job. You are working in an oil company, right? Yes. Okay, you have a good job. Some people are even dreaming of getting that kind of job. job. As if joy as if job is the source of your life. That's as if joy is the source of your joy. Mm. But you have a, a job with oil company and some people are even dreaming of that. But that's not purpose. That's it's just job. It is important. So when you talk about the difference between job and purpose and what happens when you discover purpose as opposed to when you just get a good job. Um, one thing I, I would quickly want to share, the experience I had is this. Um, for about a year and half, I was searching for a job. I couldn't get a job. I was living under the care of a friend and all of that. Are you serious? Yes. And when God granted me the job, you know, for someone staying in Lagos, I left Lagos and got to this serene environment. The first thing I said to myself, well, thank God for saving me from the traffic of Lagos and all the houses and all. And I have never heard God so loud like that in my life. And he said to me, do you think, because I, I said to myself, yes, I have come to my place of rest. And he said, do you think that was the reason I brought you here? And I said, Father, I am sorry. Now, that has been one thing that has been pricking my mind. So I now understood right from the onset that there is a purpose. Mm -hmm. So it, was, it wasn't just coincidence that we had about 21 of us that wrote the text and just only me was employed. Are you serious? So it wasn't just coincidence. I knew right from the onset that there is a purpose. Mm -hmm. That is one. Then I was telling you in the morning that I've been crunching some statistics and I discovered that out of about 1.8 billion of youths in the whole world, one-fifth of them are just the only ones that have an understanding of where and what direction they need to go, what their purpose is in life. And some of them, those are the people following their passion. Mm -hmm. Now, for fifth of all of those ones do not have an understanding. They are basically rudderless. They are just dabbling through life. They don't have an understanding of what their purpose is. Now, out of that one-fifth, 75 million are unemployed. So, about 90% of them are employed. So, to be employed does not mean you are fulfilling purpose. So it is one thing to be employed, it's another thing to be fulfilling purpose. Now, when you know you are fulfilling purpose, the amount of joy, that is the only way I can stay explaining. The amount of joy that comes out of you. Pastor, you need to see me when I was talking to the youth. Basically, when we were having the, 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 the youth meeting, I was talking to them about why youth die, why people die at 25, and they are not buried until they are 75. The amount of joy, I knew something changed about my life. I knew I was walking in the path for which I was created. So, at that point, there was no more, you know, there, I needed nobody to convince me, to tell me, look, this is your purpose. I understood that, no, my challenge was now, I've been wasting all the years I've been wasting. How do I recover it back? How do I begin to walk in that path? That has been Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm just thinking of the millions who have been sitting in churches, my dear. Yeah, it's um, it's terrible. It's heartbreaking. Um, but... I was talking to a friend of mine in California, you know, in America, and he said, Pastor, I'm a professional, and I've been all my life. I've just been talking. Only about the fact that we are doctors, I'm a doctor, or with other doctors, with, we only talk of what we do. That, you know, that is, my life has been reduced to my practice, what I do, I mean, with my work. But, Pastor, until I began to listen to you one month now, I just discovered that I'm, about, I'm going to 60. Mm. And I've not even ever thought about who am I. Mm. Who am I really? What was I created to do? Even though I have a good job, I'm getting salary, but it has become a social status thing that I'm using to brag. But I know I must have been created for something more important. But for so just surviving and for living and for, you know, but I didn't discover who I am. I'm almost 60 years old. And educated, living in America, thinking I was doing good, but I discovered that I... I, I didn't even find out. I didn't even manage to find out who I am. And that is the present challenge, sir. That is the present challenge of so many people, not just <sighs> youth. I remember when I finished youth service, when I was rounding up, actually, I had about a month, I asked to myself, okay, what next? In short, I read a book that's, that is titled, Where Do I Go From Here? <sighs> when I started talking to people, I even called my mentor. A lot of these age guys are confused. My God. Many of them do not even know. They, they are just busy running through life. Even the people who look up to have an understanding. And the truth is this, like you said, the church has not been preaching this. And quite a number of persons are in church, seated there, but to the people who are ballistic missiles in the kingdom of God, who are supposed to be blazing treasures for God, are just seated there. 
Because I had an opportunity to talk to someone. When I stepped out of the choir and I said, look, I'm not part of the choir any longer. I need to sit down and begin to think. Let me have a divine revelation with God. Let enough of this activity and all of that. And she told me, I said, look, I've been thinking about it too. So it means I wasn't the only one that was confused. And I know I know so I'm many people are frustrated. Right in the church. Right in the church. They are just playing activity. So you just come and sit down and go. And I said to my Christianity cannot just begin and end with this. It's not just about coming to church every come and pay your tithe and you go home, come and pay your tithe, do the same thing, read the same Bible verse, do the same thing all and over and over and over again. <laughs> no. It's about an impacting life because there are people out there who are looking up to you. Finding out what God created you for. And restoring the earth back to God. The day you discover your purpose is the day you begin to live. True. The day you discover your purpose is the day you begin to live. If you do not discover your purpose, probably you are just existing. And people are going to church now. They are going to church. So, that so they don't what say are they people don't... preaching then in churches? Because if you are going to church, you are not discovering your purpose. So what is the church for? I think um, to a larger extent, I don't know. I wouldn't say that the pastors are not aware or they don't know, but I, I, I don't have a, a detailed answer to why they don't preach it, really. I don't. For me, it wasn't that I... Maybe I just they just that, don't know. Maybe they just don't know. Possibly. I just have that um, confusion in me. I was so disturbed. I said, no, something is wrong somewhere. And that is how exactly it all started. Because I said to myself, look, you are growing old. Every of the guys I've read that have made it in life were people who follow their passion. And I knew they were caught for a purpose. Look at the footballers. Look at all these guys. They are, fo- they are, they are fulfilling their purpose their with purpose, joy. Yes. That is it. They are even doing it with joy. Even when others are seen as stressed to them, they are just... It's a hobby. Yeah. So it means that I wasn't... I'm not yet there. I'm not, in, I'm not walking in the path that God has created. So what is that path? To look for job. <laughs> So what we do back home is just um, you get a good certificate. Of course, that is what we've been taught for you to just go to school, get a good certificate, and get a good job, and you get married, have children. So your purpose or something is just people don't even talk about. It. Nobody talks about. It. I told you the shocking revelation I got the first meeting we had with the youth. That was the first time some of them thought about okay, what could be my purpose actually? What could it be? Some of them have never <coughs> given it a thought. Because basically some of them were putting, yes, they were putting dash on that column. I had to call them, look, you need to explain this dash. I don't understand what you mean by dash. You can't tell me you don't have an aspiration, a dream or a desire. What do you intend to be in three years' time, four years' time? You can't tell me. It's never done anywhere. Now, another good set of people I'm, I'm looking forward to now is the teenagers. Because that is another part. Because now you begin in Nigeria, you begin to see teenagers who are into courtism. So they are beginning to cash them young. But why there is no purpose <laughs> abuse in inevitable? Inevitable. And that's one funny thing. When you go to, I don't know if you have an opportunity to meet some of these in, in churches when they do, um, the teenagers, they do their Bible study and everything. You bore these people with the same story over and over again. Children are very dynamic. Help them discover Help who them they discover are. Them, who they but are. We must have a whole, I think in Nigeria, we must start many NGOs that will just be specializing in helping. People discover who they are. Who they are in churches, in schools, in just helping people to discover who they are. And, and one, one very painful thing is this: the Christians back home, have, uh, they, they've um, they've retired into them their shells, and they will tell ourselves, "Okay, um, the purpose God created us is for us to be um, um, instrument of worship." And I tell them, "Yes." What? Yes, instrument of worship. That, that's the Bible. But yes, the, by to. worship, you don't mean singing. Of course, singing, coming to church, just do no. the worship and go back. <laughs> I can't believe that. So I asked them, what is the particulars? God is too dynamic and too unknowing to be worshipped by in just one way. God is not stereotyped. You cannot worship God in one way. No, worship doesn't have to be like that. <coughs> worship can be through everything you Service. do. Service. You know, I'm, I'm writing a book now that is going to be the pro- how the Protestant ethic changed the world. Because mm. they say worship is through the service that you offer to God. Service. They, through the gift that you, you are worshipping him by giving him the best of the service mm. through your own gift and talent. That is what they don't understand. They think worship is... So you don't tell me church. it's about singing. By coming to church, you, you are part of the worship and praise <laughs> section and all of that. They don't understand that worship is everything. No, it's not possible. Your service for of God. Of course. That is what worship is. So they don't understand. So all they feel is, okay, uh, we are just... The, God, the Bible says if you don't worship God, you will raise... They fall the comfort for themselves. You understand, creating that safe wall 
for themselves. So they, they don't, they are always afraid to go out and venture into things. They don't want to. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Thank you Ben. Much, Let's give him a round of applause. Who wants to be the next one? Yes, please. Wow, 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 wow. The message was how, I mean, what, how do we say? Redeeming, Redeeming nations through, Redeeming through, nations through the, gospel of the, the gospel of the kingdom. Redeeming nations through the gospel of the kingdom. So, uh, introduce yourself again, Pastor Silver. Uh, my name is Solomon Ikeo. And uh, a wildfire revolution has just started. And there is nothing that can stop this. In Jesus' name. We have stepped into the church without walls. In yes. Jesus' name. We have stepped into the church in the streets. I've come to understand as a, as a clergyman who went through seminary yeah, training yeah, 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 yeah. that... Uh, you can't give what you don't have. In the curriculum of our seminaries and pastor schools, you don't get these things. Hmm. So you go through seminary and come out, you can't give what you don't have. My God. And it's so clear, it's so evident. From, from this, there, there are some things that uh, I'm get, getting affirmations and confirmations of hmm. some little things we've been doing in the past. I can remember in 2006, I began to gather youth and speak about church without walls. I began to tell them about school. I began to tell them about acquiring skills, not depending on, on church. I began to tell them that your purpose is not in the church. Your purpose is outside, outside the church. Of the church yes. I began to tell them that we are not the light of the church. We are the light of the world. Yes. And through that, there was a particular, let me just say this. Uh, it was on a Sunday, it was on a Saturday evening, a friend of mine called me that there will be uh, a scholarship interview on Sunday morning by 11 o'clock mm. and that I should make sure that I get some of our youth to attend, to, to go for this interview. I said, on Sunday, he said, yes. And he said, this scholarship will be to go and study even abroad. So I said, really? So the next morning when I got to church, after the Sunday school, I just called, I made an announcement that uh, I'm asking all the youths to leave the service. Hmm. All the youths to leave the service and go for this interview. Brilliant. And uh, everyone went, I bet this person is playing key. I said, leave this keyboard, leave the drum, <laughs> leave this thing. The, the, the idol, the idol of the church, <laughs> the church <laughs> idol. <laughs> We've been playing this keyboard all this year. We've been playing the drum. Now, this is an opportunity. So I mobilized them and they went for the interview. The rest of us will continue with the service. Now, from <laughs> that, four of these youths got the scholarship. Now, one or two of them, of these ones has been changed because we're able to release them. Get them out it, of the service. Yes. It's not about the focus. Even our government will focus on employment. It's not employment. It's deployment. Mm. We should deploy them to the areas of their calling, their gifting. And by doing that, we we'll see that we'll be able to redeem the earth. I was looking at the scripture while the pastor was speaking in Genesis chapter 10. The Bible talked, God talked about Nimrod. Yes. He said Nimrod was a mighty hunter. Yes. Hunting was his ministry. Yes. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> they made us to understand that ministry is all about come you, picking microphone and coming to preach. It's beyond that. Ministry, the word ministry is service. Yes. Serving, the Bible says David served the purposes of God in his generation, generation. before he went to sleep. The purpose of God in his generation, he wasn't just a king, he served the people. So we should be able to equip people and release them into different spheres of life. For example, I had a quarrel, a challenge with the, with, 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 with the church, with my denomination. When the 2012 flood, flood disaster happened in Nigeria, in the Niger Delta area, and the whole place was flooded. I was expecting that Churches. Christian medical doctors will put themselves together 
and come as a team to render services to these people that are stranded. I was looking forward to see churches mobilize their people, come with relief materials, come and render services to these people in IDP camps. I didn't see. When roads were, the flood affected roads, I was expecting that Christian civil engineers will come put themselves together and come do some, some work. Um, there's this, I, I used to say it and I would say it, there's this particular church in somewhere in Worry that uh, in front, in front of, there's a road by the church, in front of the, there's a very bad spot, potholes there. And you see old dog because of that potholes. And you see that vehicles that are members that are coming to church with their vehicles, they will not contribute to this serious mess hold up there. And you see these people calling Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. They did not contribute and or they contributed. It's just, it's just to come, you, you can, in, that, that place can be, can, can be repaired. Easily. Just easily less than an hour. If the old church comes out and they miss concrete and fill it. But you know, shouting Holy Ghost fire and this place is causing nuisance and your, you know, your members coming to church, their vehicles are causing nuisance there. So what, what are we doing? We are the light of the world. It's not just gathering people into the church. We are, we are meant to impact society. And I want to say, Pastor, what is happening here, you, you won't believe it. You are going to hear from us. In I Jesus' know. name. Yeah. In Jesus' name. You are going to hear from us. Amen. We are leaving this place with with. A wild fire passion. We are leaving this place to, to Mary Slessor left left Scotland. That is a Christian. And she got it. That she, was a promised land. She broke out from church. Church. She confronted stuff. the principality yes. of her time. And to, today she she celebrated. She celebrated. Um, that is how every Christian should have their own promised land. True. Mother Teresa had to. To break out of this yeah, church, the religion, thing, the yes. religious thing, and she made the impact that shall be. Martin Luther King Jr. broke out from the church thing, got to the street, confronted, yeah. they confronted the giant what of racial, is supposed to be about. racial discrimination. Martin Luther King broke out from the church thing, so there must be, we must move out, there must be a breaking out. And uh, uh, Pastor, we are already out. I will work with you. We'll, we'll, we'll get our networks. We'll, we, it's not a denominational thing. It's not. It's not a religious Christianity. Yeah. Ah, the hallelujah! Thing. It's a yeah. kingdom Christianity. And we are going to get there. And when, so, when you hear me, I want to tell people that are not here in Ukraine who are watching us right now, uh, and maybe they have seen my video where I've spoken about that a new day is coming for Nigeria. And I've spoken that I'm coming and something is going to hit that country that has never hit it before. It's not about any, it, it's a new day is coming. Do you see it now? From this message and from this thing you are saying, can you affirm that Nigeria will change? It is so clear. It has started changing. It has started changing with me. Yes. It has started yes. changing. So it, it, it has started the change has started with me. with me yes yes and that's just it as it started with me it will get to my family yes it will get to people around me and they, them too will take it to others and you see that the change will spread I'm certain I'm convinced about it. There's nothing about the, the, So there the, is hope for that country? There's hope for Nigeria, there's hope for Africa, Africa. and there's hope for the world. Mm. There you is think hope. this gospel of the kingdom is the answer what Jesus said? The gospel of the kingdom is the culture of the kingdom. <laughs> and you know, look if you look at the word repentance, if you look at the word repentance, the word repentance actually means change of mind. Mm. 
Change your lifestyle. Yes. Change your mind. Change your mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What's, what's happening here is that there's, there's what there's, there's what we call brainwashing. Yes. We in in the positive in the yes. positive form because our mentality, our mindset, is what controls us. And with what is happening here now. Oh, I, I could see a lot of a lot of things falling off. A lot yes. of things mm. falling off. Yeah. Casting down imagination. Imaginations of fear. Imaginations imaginations of self-doubt, self-defeat. Uh, cannot do this. They are all gone off. And I want to tell everyone that is watching and listening. Uh, it is in you. The ability is in you. The, 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 the power to change our society, the power to change culture, the power of God is latent there. But yeah. with this, it's like Paul telling Timothy, stir it up. It has been stirred up. So don't allow it to be dormant any longer. Mm. Activate it. Mm. And faith without action is dead. So let's go out into our streets. Let's, let's go out into our families and begin to effect this. Let it be like a, like a contagious virus <laughs> so that we will begin to infect everyone that comes in contact with us. I trust God. The world is out to see the culture of God's of kingdom. kingdom. Thank Amen. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, God. A round of applause. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Who wants to be the next one? Well, maybe we should just stop on this for now and continue tomorrow because uh, we have one hour already, almost. And if you are there, those of you who are there at home and who are watching this program, I want to call upon you to contribute and, and, and write uh, what you think about these wonderful stories and testimonies that we are hearing from these wonderful young people that, uh, you know, that are here. So please write what you think. I will re read your comments. And then we will end after that. Peter, Peter Foley Kujoji says, Man of God is Pastor Peter. I will want to submit that the ministers of God know the truth. In all our brother has just said and analyzed. They know if the truth is revealed to their members, they will be free from their captivity. <laughs> and the seas will be empty. I'm based in Togo, where a pastor friend visited a Bible study session, and he came to me after the Bible study saying, I have revealed too much truth in the study to, in the, study to the members and concluded that I can never be rich with that, with that kind of approach. That's the food for thought. Yeah, it's a real food for thought. Paul uh, says, there is hope for the world. Africa has turned to evangelize the planet Earth. Glory to God. Uh, okay. Paul says, so amazing. God bless you more abundantly. Betty says, we were all been betrayed by the church. Yeah, especially by the gospel that has been preached in the churches. Oluwatoyin say, thank you for the inspiration. God bless you. A call for generational impact. Yeah. Rufo says, Jesus. That's so true. The day you discover your purpose is the day you begin to live. Otherwise, you are just existing. That's what Ben said. Hmm. Purpose is the key, he says, because God derives pleasure in our purpose. And he also says, the fact that you are employed does not mean you are fulfilling purpose. Andrew Olaolua says, Pastor, thank God for your life and your ministry. Hopefully you are the agent of change our country is hungry for. God bless you. Hmm. Peter Jonah says, I pledge today to go back to those things that matter the most to the heart of God. Yeah, thank God. Yeah, it's good for, for us to hear of your decisions. What are your decisions? What do you think you want to do with what you've heard? 
And how has this been a blessing to you? Okay. Uh, Pastor Bolaji says, this is what I call spiritual debriefing. <laughs> Removing the ideologies we have imbibed to assimilate the kingdom principles to fulfilling purpose. Yes. Genesis says, building lives with the word of grace should be our priority. Thank, thank God. Uh, Stephen, Ste Stephen says, we need to expand our horizon. It has been amazing. That's what Joshua says. Paul says there is hope for the world. It's African stone to evangelize the world. Linus says, sincerely, sir, it's a one-man plan. God is looking for man who will stand in the gap. gap. The change begins with me. Clement says, let us go up at once to take the mountains yes the seven spheres of influence Srufo says sir i'm amazed by the great invasion of truth sir there is no doubt that the future of africa is sure is sure uh for the world evangelist julius says in fact so many things is running down my mind now because I have a lot of things in my mind to say, but I don't think I have to put all that into uh, a, uh, it's just a call to get up and do something. Kenneth Amobi says, Pastor, who are the right pastors that are called by God, especially in Nigeria? Some of them are not called, <laughs> so they don't even know the truth. Yeah. Pastor Bolaji, you, did you send an email to me? That is not my email you wrote. Maybe that's your email. But my own email is pastor at God Embassy. God Embassy, one word. God Embassy.org. Pastor at God Embassy.org. Fleck Karen Matip said, yes, the word of the kingdom works. I'm like a bulldozer now in my family and around me. This is only the beginning. Rufus says, God is creating an army for massive change and exploits in the kingdom with those who are willing. Well, thank you so very, very much uh, to all of you. Thank you for coming back to be with us. And uh, this second part of this message is a practical part. And we are going to be back tomorrow to keep on revealing the purpose and the messages of the kingdom. This message of the kingdom is the solution to the shootings in America, to the black-white uh, dichotomy, to the you know terrorism in the world, to corruption in nations, to all kind of problems that we have, we, the, the, the thorns and thorns must be uprooted by the sons of God arising to take back the glory of the kingdom, the glory of the children of God to the creation that is languishing in pain and uh, until the manifestation of the sons. The sons are getting up and we are going to be manifested to bring deliverance to our land and to the nations of the world in the name of Jesus. The gospel of the kingdom will bring about salvation and redemption, not just to the man, but to the earth upon which he lives as well. God bless you, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>